Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Las Vegas and continuing coverage with the APA Pool Player Championships from here at the Westgate Las Vegas. I'm Jason Bowman, and I'm joined by the Hall of Fame legend, <laughs> striking Viking, Ava Mattia Lawrence. Hi, guys. Ava, we've got two matches down. we got three to go, and we're going to be watching the orange tier here, mm -hmm. which is going to pit two sixes in a race to five. We got Josh Powell. Josh is out of Metro Detroit area of Michigan. And we've got from Chattanooga, Tennessee, Shane Feeney. So, again, we got two sixes, racing to five. Should be a great match. 15,000 on the line. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great, north against the south. There you go. APA rules apply here. Again, no coaching allowed here in the championships. Um, and as we mentioned, this is the orange tier, which I believe is the fives. And they're at sixes now. We'll have to go back to that graphic real quick on the tiers after the break. We'll wait sure till after the break. <laughs> Seems like Josh one of Powell, us yes, ought to be Don't convinced. I'm pretty sure, but Josh Powell with the break here. Oh, solid break, but a lot of dry love. breaks today. Let's look at that real quick. Orange tier. Skill level sixes, so we're right where we need to be. All right. These players are still at sixes. We've had to explain that a couple of times, but we're all good here as this match gets underway. Shane Feeney now at the table. Out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Either player going first here is going to have their job cut out for him. Five and the ten being tied up. The main issue here, you're looking for a ball where you can easily break them up. I li kind of like the so uh, the uh, stripes in here, if he can find a good shot. He is going for the stripe nine ball here. And the reason why is because of where that 11 ball was, which was near the side pocket. He had a good opportunity to break that up later on. But kind of make that first ball and claim your set series of balls. Next up, Josh is going to do the same. Tied up that mess on the right there even more, so he is going to go with the stripes like that better. The 11 ball does pass in the far right-hand corner, so if he can get on that by getting down to this 13, I would play the, the 12 here. 12, 13, 11 would be... Good way, a good pattern for him to shoot. Oh, way too firm. Way too firm. Whoops. Can he make the 11 now and get that out of there? Depends on if he wants to go all out here or if he's... Yeah, you'll see the difference in this match and the last match that we had. These guys are going for runouts. They don't want to just make a few balls and then hope to get back to the table because they know their chances once the table is open. One of these two players should be able to run the table. See if you can make this four ball down in the corner. Oh, well, that went for the two there. That's going to get Josh back to the table again. We noticed a couple of con comments here that you guys are talking about as far as the eight ball not being in the center. We apologize. We missed it here, I and apparently so did the two players. At this point, there's really nothing you can do about it. Uh, you know, the rules are kind of similar as if this the two players were playing. The, refer the referee is there for help. But if, uh, if that was missed, that the referee kind of snoozed that one. And neither player caught it. 
Yeah. Obviously, if the opponent would have said something, it would have been a re-rack and start over, but yeah. the play continued. I just verified that with our director, Turner yeah. Productions, which is why it took us a minute to yeah, respond. Yeah, exactly, we, exactly. One took note of it. Obviously, the, the players didn't and the referee, but that will be addressed. But yeah, nobody if nobody raises a complaint... Match goes on, and at yeah, this point, yeah, I mean, not we treat this as much rack. as we can as a pro tournament, but there's yeah. no different in a pro tournament. That would be the same call if both players missed it, everybody else missed it, then it's really up to the opponent or the, the shooter to say something. Uh, what once the game has continued, just like in the pros, if the nine ball is put in a different spot, then um, the game continues at that point. All right, meanwhile, Shane Feeney at the table here. Amidst the controversy of the ball not being in the middle. Well, the good, good thing, thing is, is it's very neither early. player yeah, yeah. knows there was That's a controversy. Very, very early, early. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad it's not a hill-hill 4-4 uh, four -four match. We, like we did our thing Ooh, about getting the information out and everything, so we missed it. Obviously, the referee missed it, and both players did. So, like mm -hmm. I said, I've had it happen in pro tournaments. Same thing once the game continues, then that's that. Still on the first rack here in Pool Dog Arena. If you're just joining us, you are watching the orange tier of the eight ball classic. That is your skill level sixes. A little ner bit of nerves going on here from both players. I think Shane might have the worst of that right now, but he's also thinking about where the five ball is. He has no good way of breaking it up, but Josh does. Oh, he did not go for breaking them up. That surprised me a little bit. I'm sure he wanted to come out a little farther so he could make... Oh, we'll see what he's going to do. I'm not sure at this point what he is planning on. I'm sure he wants to come out a little bit farther on that one. He's too straight right now on the 11. And a pretty serious cut here on the 11 ball. Banking it will do no good because the 10 will still be where it is. And that's a pretty smart move. When in doubt, his plan didn't quite work out, so let's go to defense. He almost got him behind that eight ball, but Shane does have a shot, I would think, on the two ball. Maybe not the one. The two ball should be able to slide by. Bring Josh Powell back to the table. Already two championship matches decided today, Ava, here in Pool Dog Arena. Three to go. David Burgess out of Philadelphia, one in the blue tier. And Tom Ramlow out of Lincoln, Illinois, is our champion in the yellow tier. Both of them taking home 15000 So congratulations to them and one of these players. And probably somewhere over an hour, just over an hour, we'll have fifteen thousand dollars as well. The runner-up will get nine thousand, and one heck of an experience here. Kind of a cat and mouse thing going on here. I think he's looking defense, considering where the four and fourteen are. The 5 and 14, sorry. They're going to be doing this for a while until one of them feel like they have a chance at breaking it open. Nobody w really wants to make all their balls and just leave those two. Josh here plays out of bottoms up back in Holly, Michigan. And he wanted to say hello to his kids, Olivia and Jamel. Nice shot there. Got that 10 ball out of there. 
He's got a shot at the 10 in the side. Just drift the cue ball down. He's going to avoid the 7 automatically. Just got to make sure he plays the correct speed so he doesn't end up behind the 7 coming down off the rail. I'd love to put a little bit of left spin on this so that it goes, when it hits this cushion, it come down this way towards the 11 ball. Well done. Perfect. All right. A little bit shaky to this point in the early goings, which is what you expect when you come in here. The table plays a little differently because of the lights when you come into this room you got all this crowd watching and you know how many of your friends are watching at home <laughs> going man i can't believe you dog that shot <laughs> so once they get the nerves out of there it tends to get better and better every rack yeah. it's going well now for josh powell with an early one nothing lead in this race to five as the referee prepares the rack with the eight ball in the middle with the eight ball in the middle we're gonna hear a word from our friends at pooldog.com Back here at Pool Dog Arena, Josh Powell will have the break. Second rack here in the orange tier finale of the eight ball classic. I believe he made one of each there, so he's got choice. Yeah, I saw the one in the top corner. Did not see the... Ten ball went in as well. Ten ball. Mm -hmm. You got those fast eyes. <laughs> yeah. This is brutal, though. When you hit a break like that, you make one of each, and there's not one easy shot on the table. I think he's looking at the 15 ball in the side. Oh, missed that pretty badly. So s we'll see what Shane can do here. Shane is 24 years old. Only been playing about three years. Ava, we've seen a few players today that have, you know, just a handful of years under their belt. Yeah. And have really come a long way. I mm -hmm. mean, when you think about, you know, from somebody that wasn't playing to to here, that's that's pretty impressive. So, good job on Shane. See if he can get things going here. I think we need to give a shout out to to all the vendors that are here, Jason. We haven't talked so much about that, vendors. but it's amazing. If you like pool, and you like anything or need anything or want anything new i mean it's amazing what they have and some really good deals too i can't imagine there's any kind of billiard item like mm -hmm. on the market anywhere no that is no. not currently here at the westgate somewhere in it's one of these cool. booths it's crazy get anything you want and uh and then some yeah and then some a lot of neat little handmade gloves and um uh, Interesting, amazing-looking wooden carved 
pocket markers and, and then all the way to the nicest cues you yeah, can find say, any online. Kind of any yeah. level of cue you're looking yeah. for. That's neat. It's not a bad looking table here that Josh is stepping into. As you can see at skill level six, seven, the first thing you're going to do here is you're going to identify where your trouble ball is. You saw that he went down and kind of looked at where he would have to be to make the four ball comfortably because that is really the only ball that doesn't have a pocket right now other than all the way down. You're going to have to play some pretty position to get there. You want to get there as soon as you can. If you can do it now, that would be great. The trouble is that no matter when he gets to it, he's going to have to make the cue ball travel some distance. So really takes a really good touch shot here if he can go two rails and up for that four. I like that cue little he's firm, playing with. Little firm. We're talking about equipment. That cue, yeah, that's, that's a cool a looking, looking cue. Looking, yeah. Yeah, just hit that firm. That was the right line. You just needed to kind of smooth draw that instead of slamming around. So now we're looking at some kind of defense. How can you? It's going to be hard to hide. Hard to hide anything, unless he can mess up and just roll that four ball in towards the eight and fifteen, and possibly uh, that's going to be tough too, considering where this corner pocket is. See what it comes up with. Well, obviously a make a ball shot here. See if Josh can control the cue ball and get himself a shot either on the 15 on the side. Or you can just go down for the 11 ball. Um... sure what he's looking at here. Hmm. Okay. A little surprised he didn't shoot the 11 ball in the corner pocket, but at least he managed to make a mess of things down here in this area. So now all of a sudden, Josh's run out here looks a lot tougher than it did a minute ago. He's looking to see if he can slide that by and just kind of use the, the rails, see if they can accept this four ball. It's going to be tough. Front of the pocket there. Bring Shane Feeney back to the table. Shane is yet to lose a match here in the eight ball classic. Did Josh come out of the losers bracket? Or yeah, was he he Josh said he lost his. He said he lost his first match. We see that a lot. He said it was the weirdest thing. He said he came in really kind of in a slump, like into the tournament mm -hmm. and not have been playing good. Right. Lost his first match, and then he said it just like flip of the switch. Something changed. I mean, he couldn't identify what, but obviously he's been playing pretty well since, and finds himself here in Pool Dog Arena. Sometimes it takes a kick in the rear to be I able guess, to kind of snap you out, out of whatever funk you're in, maybe you know. Refocus on yeah. fundamentals or yeah. something, but found his game just at the right time. All right, kick straight back here. Ah, it's a little long. Let's see if Shane continues the whole defensive. 
plan here, considering where, like I said, both the three and the four are in a bad spot. Again, eight ball is a game of patience. If you're going to go all out, especially if you're a six or a seven, you, you need to make sure you can go all the way out. The less balls you have on the table if you miss, the more they have on the table, the bigger trouble you're in. All right, he's going to go. He's going to try to break up the three ball here, it looks like. Whatever happens, he's hoping that between the three and the f two, he should be able to get a shot next. Got it out of there. Yeah, not much of one. Looks like he can slide the cue ball by there to make the four. Worst case scenario, there's always the bank, and it's not a difficult one. He gets to that side of the table, but he's lining up like he can get by there. So a touchy shot here on the two in the side pocket. Nice and smooth. All right, did it stop in time? Oh, it stopped too soon. Referee's going to come over and take a look here. Just make sure it's close enough to where it warrants him. Just getting a closer look. And this is Josh Powell at the table. The black and red polo shirt. Scratches in the corner. And it couldn't look mm. any better right now for Shane than ball in hand in this situation. All the problems that were on the table were solved by Josh, and Shane's going to have kind of a field day with the this rack, I would think. I believe I would start with a th 11 here, but it's kind of a choice, whatever you feel comfortable with doing. No balls are really on the rail or in a tough situation, so it depends on where you want to go. Just not a big fan of leaving that 11 for last. All right, well done. Just give himself an angle on this 14 ball, come up just a little bit. And getting on the 8 should be no problem. Shane looks a lot more comfortable now than he did the first rack, doesn't mm -hmm. he? <laughs> Jason Vaughn just said it's the battle of the gingers. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't even thought of that. All right, this to tie it up, 1-1. One, one. Well done. Corner. Eight ball drops. We are tied at one game apiece in this race to five. Shane Feeney will have the break. What match do we have coming up next, Jason? What's the, uh, the see, tier? That's a good question, Ava. Up next. Oh, good one up next. Well, we got the good one. This may be the, the bout of the day, folks. The purple tier, which everybody knows is your sevens. We've got Taylor Talbot Carter out of Texas. Not familiar with him, but I was talking to his league operator who said he is fantastic and mm -hmm. just having a heck of a tournament. And then Abe Shade out of Illinois, Peoria, uh, former U.S. amateur champion. I think he was runner-up here in either the 8-ball classic or 9-ball shootout a couple years ago. We did one of his matches. So a couple of great players. Should be a good match. 3.30 here at Pool Dog Arena. Wow, look at that. Ball's flying in from all over the place. 
Shane Feeney there with the break. Yeah, Did Abe Shade. You remember? You don't remember him? He, he I plays do so now. Yes, fast. I do. I do so remember fast. Abe. But it was probably about four years ago. If you, yeah, it's easy to say a couple of years ago, yeah. but we had no event a couple yeah. of years ago. So he just three the or thing four that years. Stands ago. Out is he plays so quickly. Blinking, you miss him. And he knocked out Brian Parks earlier today. So, mm -hmm. so you know he can play. That's a heavy hitter there. So it should be great. But right now we got another good one. So far, so good. Oh, I would have sh shot this 15 ball right in the corner. That was that's the only ball he's got. A, doesn't have a pocket. It's the 15 ball. Oh, he does now. Did he come up far enough? As you can see, everything else has a pocket. This 15 ball here. It's makeable in this corner. I guess he can get to it on the, with the 14 later on or the 10 ball, but I would love to get rid of that as soon as possible. <coughs> wow, we shot a combo. Holy smokes. Well done. Crowd here approves. That was not an automatic combo. He shot a good shot there. We had a little bit of time in between the last match and this one, so I ran up to my room, came back down, and we must have had like a round starting because I ran into like a wave of people coming. You know what oh I mean? Oh, yeah. You've, you've done right. that before, right? Right. Like, you're coming the other direction, and there's a round starting. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. It's like a stampede. You better get out of the way. I feel like you're in a pinball machine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Dodgeball. Also, I could run to my room and make a sandwich. A sandwich. <laughs> All right, got away with one there. Look at that. Josh doesn't really have anything to look at here. There's no good combo opportunity. There's no, you know, heroes kind of slice shot. I don't know what he's going to do here. Every way he looks, there's something in the way. There are his opponent's balls or his balls, and I don't really even see a good defensive shot unless you can send a cue ball to the other side of the table over there and block him from making the 13 ball. Or you can get on this side. On this side here, there's not much going on other than maybe a bank. So just getting his cue ball up there would be if he can do that. All right, that's not bad either. Even if the 13 is makeable, you can see that 15 ball is really tied up there. So a lot of work here to do for Shane, no matter what. I hate that when somebody misses and they leave you nothing. <laughs> you go, well, that's not that's right. rude. Do you know that years ago, it was push out on every shot you had the opportunity to really? push out on every shot on the table when I, I first started playing that. nine ball. Yeah. Wow. In nine ball, we had, so, you, you know, it was up to your opponent if the opponent missed. Yeah. Now, if you missed, I mean, yeah, if the opponent missed, that was the opportunity is you could push out every all through the match. Every single shot? Wow. Whenever your opponent missed. How and long they got did that last? Lucky. Well, it changed with the Texas Ex Express rules when we started getting telev trying to get television and everything else. It, that's when it changed, probably in the late 80s, mid-80s maybe. Okay, that's a pretty cool story. Or, yeah, like earlier that. 80s, but that's how I grew up, is every shot you had an opportunity to push out. Nice. Well, and maybe every not nice, but interesting. You know, it's an interesting, makes for yeah. a lot of, you know, obviously it's much more exciting and exploding the yeah. way it is right now, but every ball would spot. Sometimes you had like four or five balls in in a row behind the spot. So everybody was very good at spot shots back then. Mm. Okay, things are have opened up here. If you can, sl this thin slice on this two ball, really stay down through this and trust your stroke. Nice shot, and that pretty much should take care of 
Josh getting to two nothing. I would be really surprised. He really looks comfortable right now and confident as heck. Yeah, and talking to both these guys, a lot of sensed a lot of confidence from mm -hmm. both. You know, some sometimes I talk to him before the match. I'm nervous. I'm a little. You know what I mean? They're really right. open with their feelings, and uh, these guys both seem pretty ultra confident. So, yeah, a little nervous that first rack, which yeah. is like I said, even in the pros, you tend to see kind of a back and forth the very first rack until everybody gets comfortable yeah. or. Us dudes, we always put on a good front either way. No matter how we're feeling on the inside, <laughs> right? On the outside. No, you guys try to put yeah, on the front. Yeah, we good. We don't. Uh, as women, we don't. <laughs> we don't buy it. But yeah, <laughs> we're always calm and cool. But these right? guys too that play the sixes and sevens tend to play in more and have played in more tournaments than yeah, your twos and threes. Experience. So it, there are fours. So it's easier to get over those nerves from practice. Being in this situation, so. There you go. This to take the lead to one. Where's everybody from? Since we're gonna, be, looks like we're gonna have a rack situation here yeah. before the next the next break. Where's everybody watching from? It's always fun to see people. A from lot of folks tuning in too. We've had a great audience. Yeah. Hovered around really close to a thousand for most of the matches mm -hmm. we've done last night, today. Had over a thousand DuPage, today. DuPage, APA, I think that's DuPage, Illinois. I always like to see where, you know, the furthest away. Mm. Right? Like who's tuning in from somewhere on the other side of the world? Johnny Wilson from Texas. Steven from Connecticut. Tyler, Southwest Florida. Sure sounds nice about now. Well, our friend Ashley Morgan's tuning Vancouver. in. Vancouver. We know Ashley. Vancouver, there you go. We got some teams and players here from Canada. Again, Canada opened up, nice so we're glad to, to see the them back. back. Welcome back. South Dakota. Never been to South Dakota. Would like to get there one day. All right, Josh with the break once again. As we flood the stream with cities and states. Solid break, break yeah. yeah. <laughs> APA Kevin's on the couch. That's my that boy. broke his foot. Yeah. A lot of folks know Kevin. He's all hobbled for now, but he'll be back. Well, that I don't, don't Get doubt. Back to St. Louis, I'm going to nurse him up. Train him right. Get him back here for August. <laughs> Don't worry. All right, let's see what Josh is planning here. 15 and the six ball. It's a bit of a problem there. With the two being sitting in the corner. I don't know if the six can get by the 15. If that's the case. Would probably sh choose the solids, but that may not be the case. I like the solids also because you've got automatic balls to break up that eight ball. I'm not sure it's close if the eight ball would pass without breaking those up a little bit, so we'll see what he's got planned. Guys, again, are playing for 15,000. In all reality, they're playing for 6,000. Well, because the know, loser gets nine. Sounds cooler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're right. The runner, we don't even call them the loser. We call them the runner up. Runner up, yeah. They do get 9,000, which is a heck of a day by Vegas or any other standards, but, you know. It's not just the 6,000 difference, right? I know. Of course not. It's that trophy it that is. says champion on it. It is that title. That was a good shot there. A little help from the two. He's played it off the two a little bit so you could control his cue ball a little better. Got it out of there. Now all of a sudden, the 15 ball passes. As you can see here, the two was blocking that pocket. 
He knocked it right out of there. Smart play. Now he's going to look at all this traffic. Normal world, you would just make this and draw back. But look at this. You got a ball here. You got balls here. You got blockers all over the place. But he needs to get on that side of the table. He can't follow it down on the opposite side. He needs to get on the upper side of the table in order to make that 15. Between the 5 and the 4 is where you want to come. Did he get there? Oh, beautiful. Great stroke. Well done. And uh, now, since the 8 doesn't look like it's going to go, he's going to have to break them up. You do not want to hit the left side of the 7. You've got to make sure if you go into him like he looks like he's going to do, you need to hit that side of the 7 so you don't get locked up behind the 7 and 3. Oh, he even hit the 8, but he forgot to make the ball, the most important part. That happens a lot, Jason, where you're so focused on breaking balls up or getting a certain position that you miss the easier shot because you're so, you know, you, all your yeah. attention is going towards that. There's some room to work now for Shane. Shane's going to just play a defense here and like his, his options. Always scary to let a good player back it to the table, but sometimes it's just simply the smarter choice. And this is that famous situation where you have one ball on the table, they have all of theirs. He's in a bit of trouble here. All right, not a horrible result. I don't think, I'm not sure the three ball goes anymore now with the 15 being right there, but he has the seven to break them up, so that shouldn't be an issue. He took care of it right now. Now it's just keeping a level head, not making any unforced errors. The balls are all there. He's got plenty of options if he gets out of line. Shane trying to draw even here in this race to five. You see the big payday check there behind him. Constant reminder of the stakes here. Mm -hmm. Well, Shane's kind of a little bit out of line here. A little bit more and a little bit more. And the r gets tougher and tougher to get out. It's going to have to really watch it. That 15 ball looms huge. It's hugely right there in the center of the table. So you can either slow roll this seven, which nobody wants to do. Or hit it a little bit more solid to get up on the other side of the 15. Oh, he just he just snuck it in there. We'll see if he can just tap this in or if he's going down to the rail and back again with a little bit of left. Oh, <laughs> flirted with it there. He got some love from his opponent. Josh Powell kind of tapped his knee a little bit in appreciation. Nice out there by Shane, and we are tied at two games apiece. Now a race to three between these two.
they share a few friendly words in between racks. <laughs> Referee prepares the rack. You get a nice look here at Pool Dog Arena. Should make sure we give a shout out to our sponsors. Of course, PoolDog.com. Our presenting sponsors here, Aramith. Folks at Action Cues. Really appreciate all their support. Of course, the Westgate Hotel. You see our streaming schedule there. We've got two more matches still to come today, Ava. 3.30 p.m., 5 p.m., both Pacific time. We'll be back tomorrow at noon with the wheelchair championship. Tomorrow night we got nine ball, I'm sorry, eight ball doubles. Mm -hmm. And then Friday we got four championship matches for the nine ball shootout. So we have a ton. The wheelchair is to tomorrow decided. too, yeah, right? Noon, yeah. Tomorrow at noon. noon. Yep. We've got a ton of matches to be decided. So if you like what you're watching, like our Facebook page, follow it, write it down, whatever you got to do. To get the notifications. There you go. Right? Yep. Those notifications let you know. It's time to watch. Oh. Oh, big mistake. Let that cue ball fly a little bit. That didn't work. And I say that too. If you're if you're coming out here in August, watch some of the old matches. Just to kind of get an idea of what what the feeling is out here. And some of the things, especially if you're lower skill level player watch how those matches are you know a lot of the t the whole entire team matches won by the lower skill level player because they have been given some advice as to if you don't know what to do play defense roll the ball in front of the pocket tie something up do something don't stop fighting don't shoot at something hoping it might go in um you know just kind of have a plan no matter what and you'll see how defense wins most of the matches no matter what skill level you are. Yeah. You, you know, it's one thing if you got all out and you got open table, it looks great. But otherwise, um, have somebody work with you a little bit. Learn speed so you can just roll the ball just barely to the rail instead of too far if you need to play a, an easy safety. That can turn out to be a nightmare if you hit a little bit too far. Little things like that. I had never really thought of it, but, you know, it's it's kind of a cool thing when you, you know, you realize we're streaming all these amateur matches. Mm -hmm. So there's literally an archive of about every skill level of every kind having right. played in a big time match that you can go back and reference, you know, like you were saying. So not necessarily what we intended to do, but, you know, when you think about it, that's out there. Which Yeah, is, I've had several people know, this week tell me that yeah. that's what they do. You can go back um, and watch how a three handled their match or, uh, yeah, that's... I like that. Never really thought of that. that a lot way, of people go, you know, that they've got to be, you know, sandbaggers to win out <laughs> there. But now that we have it streamed, they've realized that is not the case. Yeah. So somebody was asking if the players could agree to split first and second prize money before the start of the match. I don't think we technically allow it. No. Um, we have no way of policing it, but no. Uh, yeah. Well, and here's why I don't think that would. Oh. A little miscue there. Why I don't think that would work is because. One of them is going to sign a tax form. <laughs> yeah, it's going to have to pay amount. taxes for both. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, I mean, I don't, I, in all the years I've been doing this, I don't remember that ever being a thing. But, you know, I, I have heard of tournaments, even like professional tournaments sometimes where they'll, you know, have decided before right. and they're just going to play for the, they will play for the trophy, but the money they just decided. But you better trust the person you made the deal with, right? Yeah. Because somebody's going to hand that person the money. And so, that's why I don't think you're going to see it here because these folks don't know each other maybe like some of the pros do. Yeah, and it's... Plus the tax form. The tax <laughs> form is tax a big one. A deal, yeah. I don't want to pay taxes on money I didn't get. Did you hear the bagel staples coming back in August? Did not. <laughs> the bagel staple. Bagel Stable coming back to Masters in August. Well, we'll see you here. You know, I do admire players that are good eight ball on a bar table and a seven foot table <coughs> because on a nine foot tables, the table's kind of wide open. Yeah, more room to work. More work, right. but it's rare that you see a break and everything is just, 
you know, laying there for you to run out. It's a lot more of a fight to run a table on a bar table. Nine, nine ball is a different story. It's the opposite, obviously. But on a, uh, an eight ball, it's pretty impressive when you see break and runs. Only because, it, you know, it really has to be open unless you do some serious work as far as breaking up issues and playing pinpoint perfect position to get certain balls out of trouble. mentioned earlier, Shane undefeated here in this year's eight ball classic, but is yet to lead in this match. Yeah. So he would love to And he's in out. trouble here too. He's in trouble here too, Jason. Made a good shot there, but not firm enough to where the uh, 13 or 12 ball came up. We're going to see what he's going to do here. See if he can kick it in. You never know. Oh. Josh will have ball in hand here. I would definitely start out with that three ball. Yeah, there you go. Definitely start out with a three. That's the one that is potentially the most in trouble. Everything else is just whatever pattern he chooses to go once he gets rid of this ball right here. Oh, my goodness. He did not just do that. Okay. He froze up to the eight there, a little careless. Shaking his head. He knows he blew an easy out. Now he's looking at this four ball. Now, obviously, he's got the opportunity to play defense if he wants to, considering the fact that Josh only has one ball on the table. Just thin, thin cut here and go up. Child. A little help from the point, and well played. Sometimes the table looks too easy, you know, and that's when you get yourself in trouble. You don't really give enough respect to each shot. Oh, I thought he made that there for a second. Good shot. Lock that pocket for the four. Easy way right now, though, for Josh to come to it. Just draw the cue ball back and play the four in the same corner as the one. No, he's going to take care of the four now. Really bear down on this one. Just pretend it's a super small pocket because maybe he's going to go, go rail first to make it off the... Oh, that's what he tried to do. He tried to make it off the 12, into the rail, off the 12, and he missed it altogether. So <laughs> it's not getting any easier. We'll see here if we can play good speed to come over. Just make the five and come across for the four. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. He's oh. oh, wow. Well, that's the game. Never know. Expect here Shane to take his first lead of the match. If he can take advantage of this ball in hand situation, which you would expect from a skill level six. Yeah. Again, uh, oh. one moment of carelessness, <laughs> nerves, 
thinking about if I win this rack, that's death too. You know, when you start thinking ahead, you got to be in the moment when you're playing this game. Oh boy, jumped right up. Mm, mm, mm. I think we have some nerves here. Some serious nerves. Those were tough misses in the finals. Mm. Now an opportunity for Josh to regain the lead. Again, this is a race to five. A little too thick. He's going to have to watch out for the corner. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect, perfect. Josh is definitely going to take advantage here. He's trying to figure out what that little pocket mark. It looks like a chicken wing. Am I right? <laughs> Does that thing look like a chicken wing? Is that what it, yeah, it is, isn't it? You can see it on the overhead, too. <laughs> that's I hope good. It's a pretend chicken wing. All right. Josh <laughs> Powell, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how old that chicken uh, yes. wing could be, but. I'm pretty sure that it would be. All right. With the help of the chicken wing, Josh Powell regains the lead. Now 3-2, needs just two more games. You're seeing the breakdown of the prize money here at the Pool Player Championships, which is a lot, 800, almost 825,000. Wow. Of course, these players going for 15,000. This is the orange tier where we had 187 players. More stats coming at you. 316 tables. That's so many tables. It's interesting. We actually use more tables for this event than we do the August event. Did you know that? I did not, but we have so many different things going. Well, well for no, August, you August we've got a lot of events going on. We do, but in August, you got to remember the uh, team seating occupies wow, that's true, a good it? amount of space. Yeah. So you actually get fewer pool tables in there. So, yeah, technically we've got more tables at this event than we do at our mm. other. Less people, more tables, which makes sense, right? Yep. Josh Powell here with the break. It's a pretend chicken wing, okay. Because <laughs> if he's had that since, like, last Sunday, whew. All right, one of each. Table is set here. See what Josh is going to do. I'm liking the solids from what I see. Unless he can do something about the 15 ball. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, asking about the maybe the, fifth, the solid, huh? I was just reading, somebody was, you know, we inevitably get the questions about how do you get to play in this tournament. So, yes, you do have to play in an APA league. Uh, it's kind of the first step, I guess. Well, you need to have a, a, an actual handicap, so yeah. Yeah, you establish a handicap. You can play on a singles board, which is basically a small local tournament, eight players. Um, and if you win the board, you go on to the regional event where you're going to compete against people in your own skill level range. Mm -hmm. And then if you place high enough there, you come out here, we give you, a, we take care of your hotel room, you get some travel assistance money, and you get the chance to you know take home fifteen thousand dollars in pool dog arena so it's partially about the prize money partially about the experience totally about the fun the thrills that go along with that yep yep and there's a place for everybody that's my favorite part about yeah, the league you know when cool. i first started learning about you know i'd lo known terry and larry since i was about 17 years old but once I found out when they were when they first started the league, I wasn't that familiar with it. Uh oh, scratch right off the ten. Um, but what I like about it, there's a place for everybody. Yeah, yeah, I love this event in particular. Is is perfect. I think we had a tagline that we used to use for the a championship for everybody. Yeah, you know, which it really is. You have it by tiers and same prize money for yeah. the twos and threes as it is for our super sevens, and then you got. Um, and then, but then you have the ladies only. The ladies are just, you know, most areas have that. And where the ladies just want to go out and not have to hear it from the guys what they're supposed to do every <laughs> other shot, <laughs> which I understand, yeah. uh, especially if they're, if they're more beginners and everything else. A little intimidated having to listen to it. 
go out and just have a lady girls' night out, that type of thing. And then you have your, you know, we got wheelchair players um, that are so inspiring to all of everybody else. It's like stop whining. I you can't know, wait these to guys are tomorrow. they're great. They're great. I wonder if Charlie Hans is here. I haven't seen. I haven't him, seen Charlie yet. You know, if he's here, he's got to be considered. Definitely one of the event. favorites, he's no question. Multi-time. I mean, I don't even know. How, I think I've lost count how many times he's won. Yeah, Seven, and such eight? a such a humble, such a sweet guy yeah. he is. And then we got the Masters division, which is fun. If you're a really mm -hmm. good player and you just want to go out and see just how good you are and compared to locally, and then hopefully on a national level. Lots of opportunities. All right, Josh is going. I'm not dealing with this anymore. Time for me to shine here for a minute. Shane. Shane. Did I, I just say? Blue shirt Shane. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Blue, Blue shirt, shirt Shane. Shane. <laughs> I have my little cheat sheet, but I figured I had it by now. It's hard, you know. Well, we usually I do commentary. It's players that I've known playing for years when we do a ESPN commentary, but. They've been doing us right, though, keeping everybody on the same side as the... Yes, and I appreciate that. that, yeah. We had to move heaven and earth to accomplish that somehow, but we finally got it. <laughs> Thank you. We finally got it. Prayers answered. It is hard, though, when you, you're just meeting them right before the match. You not bet. Not having known them previously. And I think he could just spin the cue ball just a little. He should be able to make this. No? I was wrong. I thought for sure that seven ball was makeable. Okay, 15 ball is... We're going to be looking at to see what the way he wants to go to deal with the 15 on the rail there. I think he was trying to run into the 9 maybe a little bit. He should. Is, he wanted to be a little bit more straight because I think what he wants to do is hit the 15 ball and make the ball in the side off the 15 that's going to knock it out. Just don't want to knock it out too much. It's just hard to see that line when you have such a severe cut on the cue ball. Got to make sure he hits the 15. And then he's got to play position also. So this is not easy. With this cut, the 9 ball being where it is, who knows where the 15 is going to end up. No, we hit the wrong side of it. That was the drawback of having such a severe angle on that 13 ball is that it's harder, so hard to judge what part of the pocket and it's easy to overdo it there. Somebody's asked the age-old question of what's a pro. <sighs> That's It's you so difficult. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm happy to because it's really the, the men pro's fault. Um, the women pro, we have a, a, a long-standing ranking list. Oh. And we go, kind of go by that list. And if somebody is ranked, you know, 68th on, on the women's pro tour, chances are that they are perfectly okay to play on the APA. Because there's somebody that comes once in a while and plays. Right. And, but on the men's tour, there's been such a lack of organization on the pro side mm -hmm. that it's it's a judgment call. Right. And it's not right. If somebody's not a pro, then obviously they're an amateur. And to have a super amateur that doesn't get to play in pro events and doesn't get to play an amateur, that's not right either. Right. So it's it's really difficult how to judge. If they don't make a living playing this game... And just because you play in a few pro tournaments 
and and beat somebody once in a while and finish in the money something <laughs> once in a while does yeah. it mean you're a pro yeah signing up for a pro and entering a pro tournament, yeah most of which you can just pay the entry fee so uh, it is a very difficult very difficult thing for yeah. to judge you know and i mean there's some obvious ones right everybody knows shane van boning's a pro right and then there are less obvious yes. ones that are you know so what we do is we look at it on a case by case basis, right? The if only thing a player we can do. In question, we, you know, it's, it shouldn't be our decision. It should not be our oh, decision, be but unfortunately, was, it yeah. is. It would be great if there was just a line. Yeah. But it's a very blurred line at best, and so we do have to look at it case by case. All right. While we were talking here, chicken Josh has been doing it. Chicken wins back up. Kind of a severe cut, but he should make this, I would think. Nice. Nice shot. All right, Josh Powell, folks, now on the hill, needing just one more game. The chicken wing is a thing. One thing I like. <laughs> I like that. Wow, did you just do Oh, wow. It's impressive. It's also making me hungry, but <laughs> yeah, no. we'll talk about that in a little bit. I like, though, the fact that one thing I'm liking about Josh um, that I see that Shane is struggling a little bit more with is instantly it looks like he forgives himself he makes a mistake he knows he shouldn't do he goes and sits down and and you could would think that nothing hap nothing but good happened when you look at him shane has been hanging with his head a little bit more shaking his head and a lot of times since you're your only coach out there you're the only one that can pump you up and let go of the mistake and move forward so and i think so far josh has done a much better job of that All right, Josh with the 4-2 lead. It's that one. Top corner. Well, you see a bit of a mess here. Solids are definitely an advantage in that situation. And he does have the solids, so. He's got the six by the pocket. Breaking open that eight ball, that's the only issue on the table for Josh if he gets to the point where he's going to run out. Well, that's going to be, well, he's got the five. Got the five, and I believe he can shoot the three as well and deal with the eight ball right now, either way, or draw it back and deal with it after. Oh. <laughs> Robert Aldana. <coughs> what is this, where you can mark the pocket with food? <laughs> can we clarify it's not a real chicken wing? Someone said in the chat that it was a pretend chicken wing. Yeah, it Fake is. Fake chicken wing, yeah. I think they called it. Yeah, I don't even know why we're discussing Nonetheless, this. Nonetheless, it that has would made be me very much <laughs> into the idea of chicken wings for dinner. I would say I'm about 90% sure that's what I'm eating tonight. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sitting here drooling, are you? Talking about chicken wings all night. Well, I mean, he throws it up there and he pockets an eight ball. It certainly <laughs> looks savory. Well, f from a distance, maybe. The plastic look of it doesn't. Wing, yeah, <laughs> Jason, it's not a real chicken <laughs> wing. <laughs> the whole table would be greasy by now. Yeah, it's true. No chicken wings on the felt. All right, Shane Feeney. Come on, Shane. If you happen to just be joining us, you're watching the Orange Tier, the eight ball classic. The Orange Tier is your skill level six players. If you're not familiar with APA's rating system, they are just one notch below the, the top rating, right? So they're very strong players. upper echelon of our skill level system yeah i mean sixes are the typical players that can break and run out at any moment play really well but with the consistency the power um the cue ball control usually is what 
sits, sets the sixes and sevens apart. All right, that was a good bank shot. Cue ball going around and doesn't leave him much of a shot here, though. All right, try to block that pocket. It did not work. The four ball is available, but not an easy situation here for Josh. I really do love how this arena has come together. Beautiful environment these players are playing in and what is probably the biggest match of their lives I mean I can't imagine a stage that either of them has been on where they played in a bigger match listen most pro tournaments don't necessarily yeah. pay fifteen thousand dollars and for first place nice. so at least the semi-pro the smaller pro tournaments do not I just told them both before the match I said just enjoy it try to yeah. enjoy it as much as you can yeah. I know it's nerve-wracking but Try to live in the moment. 15,000 or 9,000. So, so that's they're going home with a package of either 15 or 9,000. All right, Josh's little move worked. Got a shot on this 12. Both his striped balls after that are both down in the same area. The question is getting a shot on it because he's going to run into the four here. He decided to continue playing defense. All right. He didn't like it. Not a bad move there. Two ball got a little tied up with a 14. Looks like he's playing this three ball in the corner. And that should take care of the two. The four might be able to slide by there. It's going to be. Oh, he played in the side. Surprised me a little bit. Run out here for Josh would mean victory. Mm hmm. People have really zeroed in on the chicken wing pocket mark. I'm f I'm floored. It is a. I fake I don't even know. Watch <laughs> yes, and no, you cannot use you cannot food. Put real food on the table here, or probably at unless home. it's unless it's adequately wrapped. You can you know you want to bring a. I don't many. No, I don't know many locations. Say a ding dong to the table. You has got to be wrapped. <laughs> suppose you could try it, but if you get thrown out, there's nothing your league operator can do about it. You're out. <laughs> All right? Just know that. Fake food is one thing. Real food is another. And for those tuning in that are like, what? <laughs> you might get a chance to see in just a uh, little bit. Um, speechless. <laughs> Good shot there. Four ball hit a rail after contact, so all is good. But ball in hand for Josh. Oh, for Shane. I'm sorry. Did I do it again? That's the second time I doubt. Shane, I apologize. Blue shirt, Shane. I'm into the match. I'm watching here. I'm trying to figure out. It looks to me like everything goes. Trying to figure out what what he's looking at, if the 
14 doesn't go in the corner. He's got the side. I think the referee's going to come over here. I don't think it's going to be close, but... Okay. Do or die time here for Shane. He needs to make this. Just to make sure to hit it firm enough to get up middle towards the middle of the table. So you get a shot at this eight ball here. Oh boy. All right. This two inch within one. Of Shane, of Josh, sorry, there I go again. Blue shirt Shane. Blue sh <laughs> <laughs> nice. Right. Blue shirt Shane. Nice. Picking up another win. Draws within one. Mr. Powell, and he will have the break. Gentleman there in the stands with the Chattanooga sign approves. <laughs> cheering section for Shane Feeney. Got uh, quite Chattanooga. a few people. Oh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. The, what are the mountains in Chattanooga? The Smoky Mountains? Is that Smoky Mountains? I think so. You know, they got the they got like small mountains. Yeah, there, right? Real yeah. Real pretty. Yeah, yeah. Got a pretty good crowd in here. There's yes. some people that I see that have been here for all three matches. I recognize some of the faces that have been here before. Like the enthusiasm. Yeah. Also appreciate all you folks tuning in throughout the day today. We still have tons of action in the t main tournament rooms. Got all the nine ball singles players and eight ball doubles all started today. Wheelchair started today. Some of the doubles from eight ball went home or from nine ball went home already, but yeah. there's still quite a few left. I ran into some people that said they're staying till Saturday. They're loving it. They're having a ball. Team Tequila. Out Team of Olathe, Tequila. Olathe, Kansas. They were our champions in the nine ball doubles last night. They were a fun. They were a fun pair. Yeah. They were a fun pair. Like I said yesterday, I mean, the ones that seem to have the most fun are the ones that win. And even in teams, too, you know, support each other, have a good time. No rolling of the eyes if somebody makes mistakes or chooses the wrong ball. That That's a quick way of getting somebody to lose their confidence. Sure. Just have a good time, and somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose, and you can't deal with that, don't play. Well, what I loved about that, the, the team tequila that won is the the female – was the anchor of the team. She was the no. six. He was a three. He was fairly new. We don't see that as often. And, uh, you know, he, he told me before the match, he said, we, you know, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her kind of pulling my my butt out of the right. fire a bunch of times right. in the tournament. So I thought that was kind of cool. That's cool. Giving credit where credit is due. All right, so we'll see if Josh looks like a different player out there to me right now. Just more confident. And I don't know if Josh is going to get back to the table here, Jason. He came a little bit too far. He got the wrong angle a little bit here on the four ball. So just going to be a little more cautious. He could draw the cue ball out for the eight or come down kind of center ball slam it down to the bottom hit two cushions come back up oh he's gonna oh boy slow down oh <laughs> he decided to just roll down and this eight ball this is pretty strong right here
strong to very strong. Blue shirt Shane has tied this match up. Fist bump of approval from his opponent, Josh Powell. And we are Hill Hill, folks. Couldn't ask for more in this match. One game to decide a winner here. One rack, one final eight ball. Will it be Shane Feeney? Or will it be Josh Powell? Shane will have the break and the advantage. And Josh will have to hope for an opportunity to return to the table. Mm -hmm. I think when you said, will he return to the table, you meant the last rack. But yeah, we'll see. he may not at all. Break and runs are a thing. Let's see. Got the eight ball moving a little bit there. What solid break there, boy. And if it wasn't for this right here, this would uh, look pretty bleak for Josh, considering the fact that Shane has really kind of loosened up a little bit. Shane wanted to make sure we gave a shout out to his girlfriend Ashley. Hi, Ashley. She's tuning in. He has frustration there, though. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Well, let it go, Shane. Forgive yourself. Let it go. It's a tricky table, so it's still anybody's game here. Okay, I was wondering there. He said, I, <laughs> I thought he just kind of had a, a little bit of a brain fart there. He said, I thought it was still open. <laughs> he said. <laughs> there you go. Now you're shooting the right series of balls there, buddy. All right, nice job, nice job. Where's the cue ball going to stop, though? Oh, God, that's close. If you can, I think it can make the 10 there. Not that I'm rooting for either one of them, but I really hope Shane gets to get at least a shot back at the table after that. Kind of yeah. A little mental mistake there. Mm. Yeah, he's got a shot at the seven. He's good. Coming around nicely there. That's good. Well, again, Shane knows he's sitting in this position now where he all he has to do is hope for his opponent to make a mistake with an open table. It's all about cue ball control here. <coughs> All right. That is not what he wanted right there. It's going to be a tough situation to get down to that one. He may just want to hit just off straight on 
on that four and bank it and freeze it against the nine and leave no shot for Shane. Touchy little shot. Just hit here, drift over to the nine with a cue ball and try to freeze it or get as close to the nine as you can to not leave a shot. He's going to try to go all the way around the table and avoid the 10, the 14. Mm. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, <coughs> again, now you... you going to break both ways, right? Yeah, so now what are you going to say? Rack. I sure hope, sh you know, I sure hope Josh gets back to the table after that mistake. Come on now. Yeah. Fair is fair. I know you're not rooting. Oh, you're tough. I know. You're I'm tough I'm I'm, hey, I am. <laughs> you're a tough interview. <laughs> Speechless. <laughs> you just turned the tables. Turn, <laughs> turn the tables on me. We've met before, uh, right? All right. Okay. So Shane is back at the table. Has a chance to, how about this? He has a chance to atone for his own. Absolutely. Mistake. How's that? And he's got some freedom Atonement. because of where the one ball is. So, now what he needs to do is just plan out his attack here. And I I would I would get the uh, 10 ball out of there. Kind of like 10 15 14 13 is where I am. We'll see. We'll see what he comes up with. Kind of would like to leave the 9 there to get on the 8, but everybody's got their own way of going about it. When the balls are wide open, it's whatever you're comfortable with. There are more, some some patterns are more right than others, but when it's laying like this, then it's just really committing to something and really just stay on the correct side of the ball. No, the refs are, are sixes and sevens um, that have um, volunteered to come out here and referee. Christian was asking uh, if the referees in the championship table are league operators. They are not. We have a Donnie Massengill from Coastal Carolina APA is here this time. And in the Mini Mania room, we even have referees out there solve disputes or make hit calls. And those guys work hard. All right. Oh, boy. Oh, my. Oh, look at He got a roll. Oh, wow. What a roll that was. People get upset when somebody makes a ball in an uninten unintended pocket. This is much more <laughs> devastating. Wow. High drama here in this yeah. last rack. Yeah. No ho hum here in Pool Dog Arena. Don't count Josh out though. He could kick this in. The good part about this is the cue ball and the one are about the same level, s same distance away from the rails. So it's an e easier to judge than it was way off. So he's using the mirror system here to find his spot. Now uh, he just got a. Put a little extra touch on there, knowing how the table is rolling. He's played long enough now to know how the rails are reacting. Percentage of a chance here? Mm, I would say 30, 70 against. Okay. Maybe 25, 75. So Beauty is he should get a position. If he does make oh, it, oh, well. All right. Ball in hand to Shane. and Opportunity will not get any greater mm -hmm. here than ball in hand with... Three balls on the table. And we won't get too far ahead of ourselves. But no, sorry. But both players definitely, they can't say they didn't have a chance Absolutely. at the end. They've both been at the table, had chance Absolutely. in this last rack. One player just earned it a little bit more. We'll see if that's going to be Josh or if it's going to be Shane. Let's see if Shane can finish this off. He wants to land dead straight in here on this eight. Will have been and quite the uh, comeback that's here. exactly what he needed to do right there. 
Looked like for a while looked like Josh was gonna walk away with it and then Shane came on strong here at the second part of the match. Pockets wow, Maddie what a Paul. fight. What a fight. Comeback complete for Shane Feeney. Eight ball classic champion in the orange tier. Full atonement after the mistake in the yes. final rack. Yes. And we're gonna see if we can get a word in with test, test. Shane. Test. Here we go. We hear yep. you, Casey. Awesome. Ready? Awesome. Hey guys, it's Casey. I am here at the APA 2022 Pool Player Championships, winner of the eight ball classic in the orange tier. How are you feeling right now? Um, excited. I, I really don't know how to put this into words. Uh, this has all been just too much to handle. I can hear my heartbeat. <laughs> yeah, I, I think there was some nerves going on there, Shane. Um, so tell us about, you know, some of the bumps in the road, mistakenly making the wrong ball in the final rack. Was that was that because of nerves? No, I got to say it was all part of the plan. Um, <laughs> 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 no, not by any means. Yeah, it was nerves. I just, I got ahead of myself. I saw out with those balls and I just started hitting them. Awesome. So tell us about the journey so far to the finals room. Was it hard, easy, nerves? Tell us about it. Oh, it was it was hard. Everybody was good players. Um, we're sixes, so it came down to a lot of rolls at the end of the day. Um, but it, it was a hell of a ride. It was a lot of fun. Awesome. Any tips for beginner pool players? Since you are a six, I'm sure you have some good learning experiences over the years that you could provide to people back at home watching. Um, when starting out, just play, play, play. If you're if you're in the billiards club and you see some old guys that have been hanging out playing on the pool, play with them. They, they know so much, and they can teach you everything. Awesome. Well, it was pretty neck and neck here, so it was very well-deserved. Congratulations again. Any big shout-outs you want to give to anyone at home watching? Uh, I want to give a shout-out to uh, my girlfriend, Ashley. I want to give a shout-out to all my buddies in, a, in our Snapchat group chat. Every single one of them were rooting for me. I know they were watching. <laughs> um, and just everybody in APA and Chattanooga, everybody sent good love and support. Awesome. Well, great shooting. Congratulations again. Back to you, Jason. Thank you. All right, nice job. Casey asking the tough questions, but full atonement great. there, Ava, yeah. for Shane Feeney, Chattanooga, Tennessee, eight ball classic champion. That was classy. I like that interview. That was cool. $15,000 richer and a really great match by both these players. Josh Powell, Detroit, Michigan. Played great. Played outstanding. Um, not a lot of separation between those two, but. Right. You know, Shane's going home victorious today, and Josh will live to, to fight another day. So, folks, we are going to hand out the prize money, the trophies. We're going to sign off for just a little bit. We will be back here in just a couple of minutes with continuing coverage of the APA Pool Player Championships. we got the purple tier of the 8-Ball Classic coming up, the heavy hitters. The big